that we have a quorum. Um, minutes, um, Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the mass submitted? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Thank you. Take your pick. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, minutes are approved. Okay. Uh, Joe, what plan are, are you here on the uh, more? Actually, item 16 and 24. Okay, you got both of those? All right. So we have more first on the agenda. Okay. It was a weird situation, but Millerstown Borough. In Greenwood Township, this was a uh, more insurance company's property and gave it over to his son, William. And then now uh, he passed, now Brenda, his wife has it. And this is Mark Market Streets down here. And this is the borough. And then you have the creek coming up through here. And then you have Greenwood Township on this side. This is all one deeded piece of ground on one deed. It had lots and lots of conveyances out of it since early 1900s. And what she'd like to do is sell everything that's pretty much south of 17, but it is tied to the same deed, the same source of title. So all we're doing is basically this subdivision plan takes the two and separates them so that she can convey this and convey this separate. There's no improvements. Um, that's, that's all we're doing. Legally separate. They are physically separated, but we're just legally separating it from the deed by doing the property. We could just blow up some of the, of the, of the survey. As you can see, it's a pretty large, it's like 400 something. It's pretty large. Um, How many acres? Property currently is two different pieces 176 and 189. So it's a very large piece of ground. All right, so, so this is, so the, the school is, the school is uh, here, actually okay. up here. The school mm -hmm. is actually up here. This is 17 coming up. The school is, I believe, up here in it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's on the yeah. north side of 17, yeah. some Mary Street. Because their water comes down and ties in here. But here's 17. This is James Street. The uh, Mr. McMillan's dentistry is like right in here somewhere. You know where that's an old church was sitting in the square, 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 square is here. here. Yeah, the square is like right here. Seventeen's here. So you turn and go up the hill. As you go up, there's James Street here. Yeah, this is all street. Ashton areas and lots there and lots. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Hmm. So like I said, it's all one source of title. She just wants to sell everything on the side. Everything up here on this side of the creek is, is really useless. I mean, it's a slope of the mountain like this. Yeah, there's no but there's a really nice spot that someone could public sewers right in here. So someone could do something with this flatter area here. But that's going to get obviously it's going to open to go to the same person because there's a creek stream here and we know access across there. And what's your questions? Um, really, I think the biggest thing is what kind of waivers can we get away with? Because it says we need to do steep slopes. Well, if I had to do steep slopes on this overall plan, it would be so cluttered and we're not doing anything here. Um, so I do have a list, modified list of waivers that I put together. Has the township looked at this yet? The borough and the township. The township is okay with it. 
So we really have some revolving down over there, but they've pretty much passed it on. The borough is still in the process of reviewing it. Um, probably zoom into this plan up here. There's a water authority up on the hill here that has a water tank. And so we do have a municipal comment form. Yeah, this, the this is what they had provided us. Yeah, and I was just going to say about you, the you have a copy of this? I don't. Oh, okay. I don't. You're welcome to take a picture of it. Take it with well, you. Well, you can just scan it and send it to I me. I can do it. It'll be fine. So this is the area in the borough, and up here is the reservoir. So there's a road that comes in through this property up into the reservoir. There's also a road that comes in here. There's also a road that comes in here. There's multiple accesses that go up into the borough's property here. And there's even no legal right of ways that we could find. So um, I think the borough's asking this is more to provide some. Yeah, there's the three right away. Yeah, we'll see. Is she showing us sign the willingness to do that? Well, I think she is. Um, we we have a meeting with uh, Bill Dissinger, which is their solicitor. I have a meeting with him to sit down and talk about the roads yeah, because and talk about the right of ways. Yeah, because they're they're only identifying the right of ways um, that apply to the borough properties. Now there were three residential properties that also had cross accesses too. And that's one of these. I think that's this one. Yeah, there's Frederick Corp. The, the names that I had were Harp. Um, Michael and Junie Juanita Harp. Yes, there's two different Harps. Here. Frederick Harp. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for here. And oh, then I was talking about the municipal authority. So those are the two. There's two of them. There's two Harps. Yeah, I pointed those two roads out. And then this will come up in the municipal. Yeah. So, and so they're also looking at sewer easement. So there's a water easement. There's a water easement that currently exists. Down here, down through here, there's school district functions down here. Okay. Um, so, but I'm not asking you to, I mean, I'm just really here just to see if you guys are okay with the waivers. Um, I'm going to meet with the borough, resolve those right away, and then come back to you guys. Um, just so you can sort of see how we address those. I'm just, I just wanted to go away and making sure that I'm okay with these waivers or if I needed to do something before I came back. That was it. Did I give you one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So preliminary plan, preliminary plan specifications, those two are pretty simple things for the type, this type of plan, I believe. Steve, can you see this out there? Steve? Steve? Yeah, I'm getting there. I had to unmute. Um, well, I only have your camera small on my screen, so I can't see it. But if the others watching want to enlarge the image that you're showing, they could... Uh, probably see that fairly clearly. Okay. There's five waivers being requested. If you want to read through them, Joe. Yeah, preliminary plan submission, preliminary plan specifications, features within 200 feet, designation of steep slopes, and showing all the water and sewer mains, which would be a lot. <laughs> no. Which would be a lot. And again, like we're not doing anything here. So other than separating two, a lot that's currently already separated. But. It's a given that both of these lots would have frontage at some point on a sewer and water. Yeah, line. part of the sewer, we actually put in a, a sewer exemption to DEP. Yes, and we have that. Yeah, and, and they've requested us to show the two sewer locations. So we made two exhibits that we submitted to them showing that there's two possible locations. Okay, I suggest that at least show potential connection. Yeah, we did that for, for DEP search. Um, and then we have a deferral for sidewalks just in case something comes up in the future that we need to do it because somebody else is doing it or the borough is doing it, maybe we can for that. Yeah, you can tell about the contours on here that you do have. Unless there's a lot of peaks. So we, could, we put some kind of a note in there that based, if, if, if we were inclined to approve the waiver because they're not doing anything, but some kind of a note that says, hey, this property, is covered with steep slopes. And if you ever decide to do anything on this property, you got to come in with a right. with a plan that delineates this. this I think that's a fair request slopes. if you're going to waive it now. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, as long as you agree to that in the minutes and all yeah. that. Yeah, it's fine. It's just one person. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is the zoning for the parcel? 
Oh, it's many. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's all over the place. Yeah, it's, it's 180 some acres on just that size. There's so. three districts, I think. Is there, Joe? Let me just check here. So you got some in the borough and some outside of the borough. It's in the, it's in the agricultural district, the conservation district, the industrial district, the village mixed use district, <laughs> and the suburban residential suburban district. <laughs> so if the borough is involved in most of it, they could get a nice uh, um, plan uh, development plan out of this one, right? Well, it's. Yeah, the, I mean the, the the borough itself, yes. Because uh, yeah, the vast majority of the the property is in the borough. Right. right. Well, a significant chunk of the borough's ground is you know the, the potentially developable bull property is in the borough. Mm -hmm. the, the, right. Right. The big the big chunk that's well, in the town. Probably that's the only, that's the only comment I would have that is if if we're looking to waive those I you know I think that would that would be based on the borough's uh, agreement with that approach. I hear anybody jumping up and down. Anyone for you? No. Anybody out in cyberspace have any concerns about the uh, requested waivers? Are you comfortable with the idea of a note to the plan? So that we can cover that secondly. That seems reasonable. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tom. I'm saying, yeah, that seems reasonable, like I say, but you know, presuming that the uh, the borough is is in agreement with that approach. Justin just waved the borough's preliminary comments here, and their biggest issue seems to be about rights away here and rights away there. And and uh, Joe's we're going to he's saying he's going to work at work that in work that out with him. Yeah. Okay. You're not going to get any definitive action tonight. I don't need any. Just I just wanted to get a warm and fuzzy about the way it works. Yes, sir. So, so I'll add the note. I'll add the right away information, meet with the borough, and then I'll come back and let you know how we meet out with all this. Sewer and water connection points. Yeah, yeah, we are good. We are good with the plan until um, June 28th. So it will, it will be, you know, after okay, we get the extension. So we'll be good. I mean, until our next meeting or so what's the date of our June? the 21st okay i will not be here i think it's the 21st i'm going to be away i'm going to double check because i'm awesome in wyoming <laughs> You'll see but I think I'll, be I, well i think i'll be back i think i'll be here hopefully <laughs> yeah, i'll be in perry county i don't know if i'll be here it sounds like somebody better be here. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be back by this point. Oh, I'm, I'm I'll back a couple days. I'll, before. I'll be up there. You can zoom in. Yeah. You, you wait for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have zoom in the lights, do they? I didn't have cell service. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's how they stayed like the last. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, anything else we can do for you on this one? No. Wait. Just a quick question, Jason. Do we do we have anything in the Perry in the county plans uh, that that would indicate any any future growth in that in in that region of that area? Um, without looking at our future land use map right now, I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah, I would think we should we should do that before the next meeting. Take a look at it. Yep. Okay. I, it seems like I mean, it seems like the flat area down along 17 there, which is has ownership. Yeah, that's that's the area that I think that's that's part that's of the. the mine, right? I think that's the yeah. industrial area. It was at one time in the borough, but then they changed it to a. I think a, I don't know whether it's a residential suburban or what in that area. I guess it's, it's industrial. Is, here. It, is it still industrial? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Industrial the residential suburbans and behind the industrial. Yeah. Industrial is out on the road. Yeah. Residential suburban suburban here. And then you got conservation going here, but 
You're absolutely right. This area down here along 17 is that's, a beautiful piece of property for development. That's here. fine. So this is all vacant now. Yeah. In fact, yeah. it was our, our sewer connection point was right here. So is this that little strip? Where's that little strip uh, office complex or whatever? Uh, you're in that general area. Barber shop. And, yeah, I think the church is down in behind. Isn't this that storage place? Yeah, masts. Yeah. Yeah, Justin, Justin Mast yeah. storage. Okay. We, we reviewed that. Yeah. Yep. And then the church is right next to it. The church is down back. Yeah. yeah. So it's right next to that. I mean, it's pretty close. Yeah, that's that's a very so like This is the school district right here. Yeah, this is the school over here. here. And then right, and all this parking lot water and down through here, and that's where the school had issues with runoff. Well, the, these down there. right, and there's been a, a lot of water issues where this comes down and then floods yeah. where Jojo's used to be and um, yeah. that that whole yeah. area in there. If that northern uh, part ever got timbered, you know. I'm surprised that the borough didn't. That would be the really question about that. Concern, I think. I'm going to have to really kind of watch that if they do decide to go in there and do any major right. timbering activity. Right. Yeah. So we need a motion to table it here. Yeah. And are there any other questions on this? If not, somebody, would somebody like to move to table this until next month? So move. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? All right. I think you guys looked at this last month. Yes. Well, questions regarding something from the township. Yes, we got it back. Did you get that comment? Do you yes. have a copy of that? Yes, we do. Well, the issue, Jason? Um, well, the right away in right right right. Cart Cartway. Yeah. And um, the, the ordinance says the planning commission may request additional right away based on you know, the section. Uh, the township came back and they didn't indicate anything about the uh, cartway, but they said that they are requiring no additional right away. You know, along all one road. Okay. So um, with that, that was kind of the last outstanding issue. It's you know, no modifications requested with it. I think there were some questions about making sure it was clear that all the lots were going to be combined too. Right. So we actually we actually made these dashed. Oh, we can see hook these so that it's definitely yep. you can see that it's all being merged together. Together. Yes, sir. Okay. And this has a uh, B2. Yes, sir. So, and, a, and the township signed that. Yep. So you can also staff at this point to sign it. Um, and I can do so. Or if you want to sign it in my stead. Okay. It's just you know, basically an approval of the plan. Right. Okay, so the matters that we had requested additional information on have been resolved. Does anybody have any questions regarding this uh, plan? I think they all be a lot of additions. Yeah, you know. <laughs> There's no waivers on this? No, because it was a simple mod addition plan. All right, so we want to take. I'll move that the plan be approved. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion carries. All we can do with you for, yes, sir. So I'm going to scan this, I'll scan this for you, too. I have that. You have one yeah. with my signature? I don't have that. Right <laughs> so I'll scan this in for you. 
And the other thing that we need to scan is the other comment form from Miller Town Borough. The municipal. Oh, the municipal comment form. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yep. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Bob. Yep. All right, we move on to communications. Page three. Anybody have any questions regarding the communications? And we need to bring more attention, Jason. No, I think I think we're good there. Um, no, we're, we're fine. Under under the outgoing mail, there's a letter there to uh, uh, Leonard Wise, Blaine Supply. Yeah, I, I assume yep. that's regarding reimbursement. Or, yep, there's or follow up fees that he had to pick up. Correct, uh, Dave. We had we had some final fees, and there was one final clarification on. Um, mm -hmm from Pannoni regarding final payment just to make sure that we got the last bill from him and um, I walked it out to Leonard and he he supplied us a check so if I don't see any I'm not anticipating any additional um, fees from Pannoni on this project and I told Leonard that um, based on our email communications with Pannoni and um, if I don't see anything by the beginning of June I plan on just closing the file out and then taking and Scanning it all in down at the office. Thank you. Being done with it. Yep. It's it's quite a project out there. Oh. It's um if you look, if you if you saw how they put the, the underground storage facilities for the water in on that, it's really pretty amazing. Um I would I would encourage a lot of like the commercial businesses in the county that are looking to put something like that in. It it doesn't occupy you know, in the above ground space, it's there underneath your driveway. And it, it just, uh, it was neat how, how much room there was kind of reserved under the surface there for storage. You seen what they're doing there in the uh, business campus for the hatchery? No, I haven't. They seen have some of that something buried, like that. a big underground storage facility. There. Okay. I'm going to have to take a trip down there. Oh, it's covered now. You won't see shit. Okay. <laughs> what? You won't see anything. <laughs> What, what kind of maintenance do those things, re do they require maintenance? Yeah, that's one of the drawbacks. You get into confined confined space entry down down underground like that. So, yeah, eventually, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, yeah, they're typically used for commercial facilities that, that have the capabilities to handle those is third party, third party maintenance outfits that'll come in and clean them out as needed. There'll be some. Who, who do you, I guess that's where, where I was leading with that is. It's landowner responsibility. It's landowner responsibility, yeah. but does anybody? Yeah, they would get a. They would get a back truck. The landowner does what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> that, that's one of the issues. Yeah, maintenance maintenance needs to be Blood. needs yeah. to be verified. Yeah. During a storm event, it would be easy to test to see and make yeah. sure it's, it's still flowing correctly. Yeah, it so it should, should absorb it pretty readily. Um, pull all the fines get in there and clog the holes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you would hope that they would have the ability to try to flush it somehow too, but it's it's got a lot of direction underneath there with that block, that concrete block too, which kind of it's not like a it's not like a septic line or something like that where you're flushing it no, right out. It's tension or retention for some yeah. 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 Over time they might there might be a, a regimented schedule that maybe the engineers advise them of. And I could talk to Charles Axman and see maybe Charles had suggested something to Leonard as far as like maybe 15 years digging it up and just kind of cleaning out the block and resetting it. But Point made here is is that anything that should be in our uh, hmm. ordinance? Yeah, is, it, is the township going to see that that's done? Yeah. Is the so they're not going to see that it's done? So should we be 
setting up a mechanism for seeing that that's done. Yeah, um, that that should be in the ordinance. I mean, any 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 of, the, any of those underground structures like that need need periodic inspection, uh, and typically annual right. annual inspection is good, and and then and then maintain them as needed. But I mean, if you were in an urbanized area uh, over more than fifty thousand uh, people per people per square mile, then you would be required to do that under the MS4 permit requirements. A municipality would be required to to make sure that that happened. But so, so yeah, I guess it falls back on us to to verify that. Falls on somebody. So, yeah, or at least to get it in the it, get it in the plan or get it on the plan so that so that that's noted that yep. that should should happen that's that's really the yep. key that's really what i think what we're talking about here is to get get a note on the plan yep. for that maintenance note to happen the, yep note on the plan or uh, as an ordinance that says every so many years you need to do yeah. that the ordinances kind of get you get lost in the shuffle <laughs> i don't know it's just you know, sometimes a little more enforceable when it's on the plan, I think. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Your condition of approval, so to speak. I'm just going to add that to his list for next time we update our ordinance, right? Okay. All right. Thought for the for the future on the our grandchildren that'll be worrying about this. <laughs> we sure as hell will. Do they, Jason, do they have a maintenance access uh, uh, manhole cover in place to be able to get down into it or not? Um, I, it seems like there's a, seems like there's something close by. I, I don't know whether it's on one of the, uh, the um, catch basins. There, there's a there's two basins. There's one at the outfall, and then there's one like where it kind of bends. There's like a little crook in the direction that before it gets to the to the creek. And the uh, second one is is the one that has like a concrete divider midway down through the the uh, catch basin with a slit down through the center to regulate the the volume leaving the the, uh, the last basin. The other one is a junction box, basically, and I, I can't remember if there was any type of a manhole cover on top of it, or whether it was just a block. Um, yeah, I mean, as long as you've got, they've got some way to get in. I mean, depending upon the size of the tank, you could go in there with a, mm -hmm. um, with a, a honey dipper, a septic, a septic tank uh, pump. Yeah, uh, they had and, uh, and pull it out had, that way too. Right, right. They had it open. And they didn't have the, the lid on it. So I, I could see down in it when they were, they were uh, basically doing the sealing of the, uh, um, the um, PVC piping that was coming into both sides of the junction. And uh, they, were, they were finishing, putting some finishing touches on that. Um, so I didn't see the top of it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Keep going for down the road, but it can be lifted off if they have heavy equipment. Yeah, I mean that's that that's half the battle. A lot of times, you know, stormwater facilities are are built, and then there's no way to maintain them, get in to maintain them. Just standard standard uh, detention basins, <laughs> and we run into that all the time on on DOT projects, PennDOT projects. They're just you know, they're built in the side of a a hillside, and there's just no way to get in and maintain them. But anyway, that's half the battle, or more. All right. Um, the version, I guess. So, uh, move on to payment of expenses. One hundred eighty dollars to Tri County. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Closed. All right. Um, reports, uh, treasurer's report is attached. Is there a motion to accept the treasurer's report? So moved. Thank you. Second. 
Second. And seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Section assisting in Spring Township with the final draft zoning ordinance. Um, they also attended the um, the Planning Commission's public hearing, and uh, they're going to be moving forward with another public hearing for the Board of Supervisors. So um, I've been asked to attend that as well. So I will be there through um, through all of this process um, with the township. What kind of reception are they getting from the general public? Oh, that's we we were told that there would be a lot of people at this uh, public hearing for the planning commission. And nobody heard um, The secretary was there, and the solicitor. There might have been one other person in the room with the planning commission. But yeah, that was it. And um, I, I I would have envisioned that maybe you know it being. The night it was, which was the NFL draft night, and there might have been a few people that stayed home for that. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> they um, they'll probably be um, in attendance for the supervisors meeting um, if they do have concerns about it. But um, a lot of a lot of attention has been you know paid to the individuals that have expressed concerns that have come to the meetings, um, and they've worked with. Them to try to make sure that they were comfortable with what the final outcome was for their properties. Okay, so the, were the, the concerns were sort of property specific. I don't want this to happen to my, as opposed to concerns yeah, and, about the whole thing. So. Yeah, and then through the process, a lot of them have recommended that instead of, you know, categorizing their land as residential, that they wanted to, to be listed as agriculture. You know, because that's how much a lot of the people around the community, you know, you know, feel, you know, that agriculture is obviously important in Spring Township and they want to protect it. So good. Yeah. All right. Any, any questions on that? All right. Hearing none, uh, program progress report. Is that you, Steve? Yes. Can, can you guys in the room, can you see the big, this on the big screen? Yeah, hold, hold on a second here, Dave. I, I forgot. Ben, Ben um, Warner, just like last month, he's he's continuing to work with Oliver Township on the fall, though. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, so if you can see this, the first thing I wanted to briefly talk about is this safety plan that we got the federal grant for. Uh, and I think we have a real good group of people from Perry County that we're going to be working with there, including the state police and the LEPC uh, committees, some, uh, I think we'll get some really good input. But what I'm, what I'm showing on my screen, this is our uh, online safety app that we developed. And one of the things that we just updated that I think makes a great municipal tool. So you're looking at five years worth of crash data um, across the region. But what we did, you know, most people wanna see something close to home. So, uh, you know, we, we added this tool that you can pick your municipality. And right there, you see what I zoomed into Carol. Uh, so not only do you see where the crashes have occurred over five years, but you can see it's been 340, including five fatalities, 17 serious injuries, and 124 minor injuries, you can see days of the week, you can see what the long-term trend has been, the types of crashes that uh, you see, and I can even kind of go down for that. So if you're curious, you know, the focus of our planning efforts is gonna be on fatalities and serious injuries. So I can toggle that and even see specifically where they've been uh, in the township. And I can, we can now do this for any municipality in the region. So. Uh, I think it's going to be a good tool, not only for our plan, but, uh, you know, for anybody who's trying to understand what the safety conditions uh, have been. And you can even click on any one of these dots and get the data uh, that's associated with that specific. We're actually going to be working to clean this up a little bit, make it a little easier to understand. But uh, these are the kinds of tools that we're going to be using as we do this uh, safety planning 
effort moving forward. So just as an FYI, if you haven't, you can just get on the Tri-County page under transportation, look for safety, and you'll get here and you can play all you want uh, with the data. We're at next month, we're probably going to get access to the 2022 data. So it will soon go 2018 through 2022 instead of 2017 through 2021. So uh, just, I think, an effective tool to help us with this effort. Um, also, speaking about transportation, there's a topic that I know this group has talked about periodically um, involves issues associated with Norfolk Southern. Uh, there has been a change in the local point of contact for Norfolk Southern. At the HATS meetings, they also requested wanting to have a better communication there. So we reached out to the new guy. And in fact, Jim, I think it's next Friday, isn't it? Yes. That sound right? So next Friday, um, the, the Jim and the uh, officers from the HATS coordinating committee are going to sit down in our office uh, with the new gentleman from Norfolk Southern and you know, introduce themselves and some of these key issues that we've been talking about over the last uh, couple of years and see if we can't find a way to have a better communication uh, with Norfolk Southern. Jim, I don't, you're going to that. I don't know if you want to say anything else about that or not. But. Um, yeah, I'm planning to go. Did you get that link to that article? I yes, yes. Uh, there, there was a one of the big issues is this blocking of access. access. There was a, a lengthy article uh, about a situation in Indiana, mm. the exact same stuff, school kids climbing over the train to get to school, and and it's Norfolk Southern as well. Of course. And, and of course, their, their uh, attitude there is much the same that we have, have, have seen here, but it, it was a lengthy, lengthy article, but uh, when I saw that, I thought, boy, this sounds very familiar. Right. And, and a lot of it comes down to the fact that they, they are running trains that are now one and a half to two miles long. Yeah, and, the trains. Um, because they can you know, run. Because they can. Because they can run one two mile train with the same crew that they can run a one mile train. And uh, there's no place to put them. Right. Hey, access for public, uh, for like you say, school students or what we've experienced in, in my municipality, uh, they're along Sex Center. But it's also access to that resource, the river itself. You're not allowed to, to walk across those trucks to go fishing. You can get arrested. That, come on, that, that's a valuable recreational resource area that people should have access to. Okay. Yeah, and I, I'll just add in there to get that is, he, he actually called me the other day and asked what types of issues did I think we would talk about and what, what you guys are discussing right now was one of the things I mentioned to him. So I, I don't know what answers we'll get uh, moving forward, but it will be one of the topics of discussion. And last oh. week, last week, Steve, when I was at the, uh, the planning director's uh, meeting, I, I brought this up to PennDOT. Um, and I mentioned to him, I was like, you know, I asked him, I said, well, you know, doesn't Norfolk Southern presently receive funding from the federal government um, <laughs> before any of their um, pursuits? And they 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 acknowledge that, and it's like, well, you know, it seems like there's a little bit of leverage there. Yeah. You know. Well, they they come in the hats all the time, asking for us to endorse their application for the gazillion dollars for this, that, or the other thing. Yeah, to the quid pro quo. Yeah. One would think. All right, so just moving on through a couple other things. Uh, just, just before you move on, Steve, ahead, I just, it, it's, is there a way that you can kind of throw some alternatives out there in terms of, you know, maybe maybe strategically placed uh, uh, structures uh, over top of, um, or if there's openings under, well, not, not a whole lot of openings underneath there uh, in the, uh, along 11.15, but... Um, and it just, yeah, I, I guess, just to test the waters with with the individual and find out if, if, because I'm sure they've had to do that in other locations where they may have put a structure over top, 
because they're they're typically using those sidings for storage uh, of of those of those large large drains. Right. Um, that's why they're sitting there for long periods. So, you know, what they used to do back in the day was was they would have structures over top to allow uh, access. Um, I can remember going to Altoona, went to Altoona, and stayed at Altoona, and and there, yeah, there's structures over top of the railroad for that reason, so that the townspeople can get across the the, the tracks. But anyway, yeah. No, Tom, I agree. I, this I don't know that at this first meeting we're going to get down to that level of detail, um, yeah. but uh, you know, basically what I was relaying to this fella is we needed to have a better uh means of ongoing communication i wanted to have this introductory meeting and then we have provided him with a schedule of the hats meetings uh inviting invited him to participate in each of those and he's expressed willingness you know i i don't know in the last five years since i've been doing hats meetings uh, i'm positive that norfolk southern's never showed up um so he did express yeah, a willingness to participate more frequently. What that really means, right. I don't know. But they're, I think those they're, are the they're getting a lot of heat heat because of some of these yeah. uh, derailments and so well, forth. So uh, they, and that's they've got what, uh, a lot of PR yeah. work, uh, public relations to be able to uh, and that's recover. Uh, yeah, that's what everybody says. If you were ever going to have a conversation with Norfolk Southern, now's the time to do it. Right. So good timing, I think, overall perspective. So anyway, yeah, just you know, just a we'll quick keep... one on the crash crash data the information yeah. that you were shown and so forth. Does yeah. that pick up? Can you can you sort the lane departures? Uh, you you mean like hit fixed objects going off the? Well, no, no. I mean, just going I... going across the. I mean, kind of PennDOT does a pretty good job with the snaps, the 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 uh, the, yeah. the little rumbles and so forth. But there are a lot of states that that uh, you know they've got so many. And and you see cross over the media or cross over the the double double line or cross over the center line there, you know it's a lane technically a lane departure and so you got head-ons and 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 people leaving leaving the uh, road and and hitting trees and things of that nature. But uh, you know and then and it kind of as an add-on to that, um, <laughs> it, what how how much of a part does distracted driving play in it? And and I got to think that. With uh, with with all the cell phones and and so forth going on out there, I think that's a huge part of of what. But I I'd, I'd just be curious to see what what kind of statistic that is in terms of the lane departures, and then if there's any way of keying in on. I see they have the alcohol, drugs, and impaired drivers. Yeah, the, there is the, the uh, cell phones and the iPhones probably don't don't uh, mix mix into that, or there's no. Automated, automated. Oh, there they have it. Yeah, there is. Here it is okay, good. They do have and I, I, it. Uh, okay. I got to get this All thing right. to re refresh here a second. But the, uh, the only thing I'll say about that the, is I think um, you get decent data on distracted driving in cases where there are significant injuries. I think if it's a reportable crash that's towed away and nobody's hurt. You know, and to some degree of the time, people, you know, they're asked, were you on your cell phone? Of course not. <laughs> no. And unless there's a significant injury, I'm not sure that that gets investigated in much right. more detail. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, we can, uh, we can toggle that on here if I, so if you look at the 30,000 crashes for the region, if I do distracted driving, it's 10%. You see that? Yeah. It went, yeah. It went from 30,000 to just over three. Um, so I, I'm just, I guess I'm just saying I would take that with a grain of salt in that case. <laughs> really? For sure. So yeah. okay. it does have the capability though, which is good. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So anyway, moving moving on to a couple of things. I, I I don't remember looking around the room uh, if many of you were able to attend our uh, annual luncheon. Uh, we had a really good attendance, about 150 uh, folks. We talked about active transportation planning that Hats is doing, and that uh, Mike Hartley uh, was one of our panelists uh, talking about what Millerstown, uh, what Hats is funded for Millerstown study. Um, so I thought it was a it was a good event. It was well attended. Um, next year's topic 
is expected to be this safety planning effort. So uh, if you're, you're interested in that topic and things that uh, we're gonna be doing to try to reduce these fatalities and serious injuries, I think that's gonna be the subject uh, of the, of the uh, luncheon next year. Um, just moving up, excuse my grandfather clock. Uh, moving on, I, before the meeting, I think there was a little bit of a conversation. Uh, we undertook this study looking at uh, basically the uncontrolled section of 11 and 15 uh, above the 22-322 interchange up there to, uh, uh, towards New Buffalo and in that area. And the other part of that study, uh, as Jason was indicating, was uh, I'll call it the square in Dunn Cannon, um, looking at uh, things that we might want to do improvement wise to prevent those areas from becoming uh, significantly worse in the future. We were going to have a meeting next week, um, but we got some late comments from Watts Township with some questions. So we are postponing the meeting until we can get a chance to get some clarifications from Watts. And then we will reschedule uh, that public meeting. I'm expecting sometime in June, but I don't know yet. So if you're interested in those areas and what's going on, probably have a meeting in somewhere around a month. Um, and the last thing uh, I think I'll mention, I, I think at the last meeting, it was right after we had won the uh, governor's award for local government excellence for our planning toolkit, which is that series of fact sheets and model ordinances and things that we produced. Uh, well, it's it's that and the regional stormwater program uh, that we've done. So I'll just say this, um, you know, maybe the regional stormwater program, while it doesn't apply directly to Perry County, um, has some some of the things that we were doing there might have applicability in Perry in terms of the planning toolkit. Uh, if you haven't taken a look at it, uh, I suggest that you do to see the range of topics that are covered there uh, and things that might apply. Uh, in your municipality. So those are my highlights that I have out of the progress report, unless anybody has any questions. Steve, this is Bob. Uh, the meeting that you talked about, is that the so-called Dunn Cannon study that Jason- Yeah, that's what Jason, that's what Jason was calling it. I, um, I don't actually remember what the technical title of the study was, but yes, yeah, that's what he was referring to. I don't know about that name, but anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, very interested. Uh, let me, can somebody please make sure I'm made aware when that is? Sure. We can, uh, if, if, uh, if you like, we can uh, make sure when that uh, announcement is going out, we can even copy the commission numbers on that. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Any other questions to Steve? All right, we'll move on to unfinished business. Uh, county comp plan. Well, a couple of quick things to point out with the comp plan. <clears throat> um, we have 19 municipal resolutions in hand now. Um, there are three that are still outstanding that had indicated that they would be passing the plan. Um, one, I believe, has already mentioned that they have passed the plan, and that's Marysville. Um, but they're the resolution, and I, I still have yet to receive it. Um, but um, they are, I guess, in the hopes of having a new manager down there soon. So um, they haven't been able to track down the signed copy. So um, as soon as I have it, I'll post it up on the website where, where we posted all the other resolutions. Um, we've uh, sent out uh, a survey to the municipal secretaries with the request that they get this information to in front of their, their road foreman to uh, give us an indication of what sort of municipal equipment um, their municipality has so that we could assemble a countywide municipal equipment inventory list. And on that list, we're asking that they advise not just the county, but any municipality of the availability of the use of that particular piece of equipment. If they want to loan it out, they they could do so. Um, 
We want to make sure that people are aware of what equipment exists in the county and um, whether or not they'd be receptive to loaning it out. As part of this whole list of 30 municipal uh, inventories uh, of these uh, pieces of equipment, it's, it's categorized as just vehicles, um, heavy equipment, and then other equipment. So your lawn mowers, your your you know uh, I don't know street sweepers. Your that, was, that might be a good thing to get into the hands of the county EMS and they've already started to do this for the EMS folks and and I think that maybe there's a way to actually blend the two together. Yeah, because you can picture a situation where it's some. They had emergency situation where they need a dozen forklifts to get into, you know, to deal with some. Yeah, you know, when I get this done, I, I'm I'm going to kick it out. Backhoes, yeah, backhoes. Um, when I get this completed in draft form before we post it up on our website, um, I did attach a um, a sample um, loan agreement at the tail end of this. And I found that I thought it was a really good one because it kind of spelled out some considerations for, um, you know, monetary, you know, offset, you know, in case there was ever an issue with, with um, having to repair something or replace something in its entirety. You know, it's, it's obviously, you know, not every municipality can afford to have certain pieces of equipment and this gives them perhaps an option, you know, if, and it could be, you know, a lot of them are coming back with no, 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 you know, we're not going to loan this out. But I think that, you know, once they start seeing what's out there, there might be some, you know, picking up the phone to call and say, Are you sure? I think you'd be surprised how much that goes on right now. Yeah. There's a lot of it goes on. Yeah. Road superintendents are in touch with all their joining municipalities. They, yeah. they know what they can get where. I've even heard that even the road crews. Mm -hmm. are being you know going to other municipalities because they that way they have enough to flag they have enough to like be safe out there while they're doing their work so yep all right Any questions on that? Be, yeah, I, think it'd, I think it'd be interesting to hear the results on on that i can remember 30 plus years ago um and, and coming into the township and uh uh and they Asked, asked, you know, do you have, do you have a, a, a tar pot for some chip and seal uh, patching yeah. and so forth? And they said, no, we, we, we borrowed it, or we borrowed one from Marysville. Yeah. And they said, no, we'll, we'll never allow that again. So, <laughs> so somebody, somebody upset Marysville somehow or other with his, uh, with his tar pot. So, <laughs> but the, the, the agreement sounds like a good idea. I think, you know, and that's that's maybe half the battle sometimes is having a clear understanding. Standing of, of what the, yep. the rules are. How to bring, are, him, bring him back to the way they borrow it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just like a rental agreement, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think was missing in, in the, the historical case there. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, and the last item, I've updated uh, part D uh, picture in motion. Uh, that's, that's kind of a running record of where the uh, current status is of all of the projects in Picture Perry. So uh, we did post that today, so you get a chance to take a look at that. And I'm kind of trying to keep track of you know, what kind of funding has been leveraged as we move forward with Picture Perry so that people can begin to see, you know, hey, this isn't all just about just putting text on paper. This is getting things done and implementing the plan. Good. Yep. All right. Uh, hazard mitigation is next. Uh, the RFQ is still out in preparation. Uh, of the next uh, hazard mitigation plan. Um, we have received uh, interest from one of the three, or one of the four that we specifically directly emailed uh, the RFQ out to. Um, and they have indicated that they plan to submit a, a, a proposal. So um, kind of waiting till the end of the month and that's when we'll, we'll take the uh, RFQ down um, and, and see how many, you know, hopefully we have, you know, all of them and, and some to kind of review. But if we have one, we'll be happy because obviously we need somebody to write it um, the next time. So 
Um, June next month is the annual review month for the plan um, between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. So if you want to sit in on that, we'll we'll try to get that going. Um, and um, I guess probably within a week's time, get some notification out on it so that all of the uh, committee members are advised of you know the fact that it is our annual review. So. Um, Anybody have any questions on the hazard mitigation plan or even the, the comp plan? Jim, Jim's coming back. Just tell us to continue. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he said we're gonna continue. Okay, um, uh, the next item <laughs> would be that we're, we're at the cap. And, and I missed Monday's meeting because it wasn't on my calendar for some reason. And Steve pointed out that it was a kind of a running schedule that for some reason my outlook lost for me. <laughs> so, so Steve, I, do you have anything with the cap that you want to share yeah, with them? Just, just in terms of uh, Perry County's uh, program and reimbursable things under that, I, I'm going to expect that we might hit a little bump uh, here for a short time period with the staffing changes at the conservation district, but hopeful that that won't last very long and those projects can keep moving and uh, we'll be able to reimburse them. So that's it. That's the only thing to really kind of be aware of to a certain degree. Yeah, if, if, no, if none of the commission members are aware, Sally is going to be retiring here next month. Um, and uh, Christy Smith has, has left. And I think they've hired a gentleman. His first name is Gabe, but I don't know his last name. So we'll get to know him. Any questions for that? All right, we'll move on to uh, municipal reviews, page 17. Anybody have any questions regarding any of the, any of those? Unusual to see Tuscarora in there three times. I know, been busy. <laughs> Probably a year's worth of activity for them. Mm -hmm. Nobody has any questions on any of those. Uh, is there a uh, motion to ratify staff's comments? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 And uh, opposed? Yeah, motion carries. All right. Uh, final draft spring township. We talked about that a little already. Anything else you want to add to that? Jason has spent a lot of time with the Spring Township folks and he continues to. So thank him very, very much. Thanks, Kathy. We'll see if it all comes to a, a positive outcome. It's a lot of hard work. And you know, I, I, I know that the township went back to square one once before, and I, I would hope that this time they don't. Oh, I certainly hope so. All right, um, Howe Township. We talked about that one last month, right? Well, that one we need to uh, send a letter off to Spring as part of the review. Okay. Yep. So very. Uh, and that was sent out to everybody. It's a very general you know, letter of support. Um, it does point out the fact that they're they are holding off on the solar provisions at the present time. Their intent is to pass the ordinance without the solar provisions and work them in as a separate standalone ordinance shortly thereafter. 
All right, Secretary, uh, so I move for a motion to uh, send a letter of review for how to for uh, Spring Township. Yeah, correct. Uh, somebody care to make that motion? I'll move. You know, take one of those as a motion, one of them as a second. We'll do Bob as a motion. And Kathy, we'll, we'll put you at the second. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. So it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Then on to how to have it. This was the, um, the same um, amendment, almost, I, I didn't notice any discernible differences except for maybe a couple very, very minor changes to the ordinance that was reviewed last time or the last month. Um, and, and basically we removed, I think there were two bullets that were removed from the response back with the uh, the uh, recommendation back to how township so um if you saw that draft letter um, basically it supports the township's decision to you know change their allowance allowed area where the re renew renewable energy resources would be uh permitted um originally they were permitted in every district um but now they're a little bit fearful of the investment that they've made up in the Red Hill area. And they kind of want to protect that investment by not seeing solar panels like occupy the landscape um, when they need to have some revenue uh, created to offset the expenses that they've outlaid. So um, that's kind of what has necessitated this. My, my biggest concern is we still kind of pointed out is that, you know, it may work to their disadvantage in one respect when, when you look to um, you know, a certain type of um, industry or business that chooses to want to locate in their commerce area um, may opt to go somewhere else because um, they might want to use a renewable energy resource to um, help them as an accessory use, which this change doesn't begin to focus in on accessory solar. It doesn't look at those types of accessory renewable um, energy resources. So um, I guess, you know, it's, it's kind of a trade-off for them. Maybe someday if they, if they get them in, maybe they'll have to change their tune on that. But Right now, I think that's the direction they're headed to try to protect what they've got invested. So um, the letter does support it, um, but it does point those things out as well. All right, any questions for Jason on that? If not, is there a motion to uh, send that letter of review for how township? I'll make that motion. A second. A second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Moved. Move to move. Move to something. Sewage modules. Yep, face. There's this. Appearing for ratification purposes, um, the, the, the um, they were distributed out to uh, the commission before the meeting as well. So I'm getting ahead of doing that if I get those sewage modules completed before the meeting. So uh, we did point some things out with the uh, with the fiscal handle crossings when they were actually comments there with that particular one because of the size and scope on it. So all right, is there a motion to uh 
I just went out of my staff review of those. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Other matters. Intergovernmental review. Marysville and New Bloomfield. Anything controversial about either one? Oh, oh no, these four are again. These are supported by Picture Perry. So, All right. um, I, I do have to make a change though to the top of the um, the draft letter for Mary's Alliance Club. The, the last time they applied, they were applying for DCED, um, one of the DCED grant applications. This time, it, it is a DCED grant application, but it's through the Greenways Trails and Recreation Program. So I'll, I'll make a change to that, but the other one is fine. And those those letters were also sent out to the commission to eliminate. Uh, is that park? Who owns that park? That's a good question, Joe. I think it's. I think it. I think the lines call. I think they do own the buildings. There's something you know. The ground might be owned by the borough. Um, there are amenities in the park though that are owned by the Lions Club. So. Okay. I'm not sure. Without looking at the tax parcel map, I can't be certain on that. Okay. I'm just curious. It's always been a Lions Club park. Oh, I yeah, I know that's what it was called. I just they, so where the Lions Club eligible will apply for. They that's why they they go through the borough. They they get the borough to sign on to any of the state applications as the the one on the basically okay. to help for the uh, application of this. All right, is there a uh, motion to hear both to uh, authorize sending both those letters in support? To move. Second. Thank you. I said I'm on the agenda. Not really. Maybe. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, now, under old business, we didn't mention the the solicitor. Can That's you, one. <laughs> can you update us on that? Has anything happened? Has that gone to the commissioners? Or are they thinking about it? Or yeah, I, I asked um, I asked the commissioner's office if we would expect to see a letter at this time, and they they were willing to um, have the solicitor look the. Um, contract that was supplied by um Solzman Hughes um recognizing the order that was offered up to them Solzman Hughes and then the other uh, uh second and um so Bill is looking that contract over and he'll be hopefully getting that contract back to them and they can commence and go forward. Now in terms of process an identified need um when when would you want would you want them at the next meeting um to to talk to them i think once it's formalized it'd be nice to have them show their face at least once so we know who we're dealing with well and, then... and that's the thing jim because i i mean if you go back to last month's meeting we did have two communications that came in i don't know if anybody saw those or had any questions about them but they were from PennDOT concerning the drive issues down in Southwest Madison Township. So, what did they have to say? Well, I mean, PennDOT was essentially looking for the commission's assistance at this time to do what? To enforce the ordinance. So, and that's been kind of what's been kind of an issue is. You know whether or not we have that authority 
the commission has the authority to to actually enforce the ordinance or yeah. if the provision of the mpc takes precedence and that's something that i think that this you know solicitor hopefully would be able to guide hey, your folks better hey hey jason yes if i if i could i, I think you know, there were two sets of letters that went out. The letter that went out that was addressed to the commission basically says they understand the commission's perspective that the note on the plan was not a condition of approval. It does not, the latest letter does not ask the commission to enforce anything. Okay, all right. Thanks for clarifying that. But I think that I think that at the present time that would be probably well, maybe something that might be discussed or talked about um, with the solicitor. Yeah, but just a real quick, and I don't have any real details, but I did hear today that they're making real progress with getting close to making the necessary improvements there. Once that's done, it's then going to be a matter of PennDOT chasing somebody to pay for them to Correct. reimburse. And are the I, I guess the the property have the property owners been involved in that process? Are they on board with what PennDOT is asking to be done? Well, the the actual applicant as I understand it, for this new HOP that's gonna be reflective of the improvements is actually Mr. Smith. Uh, and that's the, the, if I understand correctly, the last remaining element for being able to get out there and do the improvements is the agreement from both Mr. Smith and Sloss to authorize them to be on their properties to do the work. Okay. So Mr. S is Mr. Smith is the other the aggrieved party who's been in here once or twice with Mr. Sloss. Yes. Correct. Okay. Has Mr. Drum just been taking the back seat on all of this? Yeah, Mr. The only activity I've seen from Mr. Drum, his attorney actually wrote a letter to the renters there. Um and if I could generally characterize it, it was uh, putting the blame uh, for any anything, any delays or anything on PennDOT saying that Mr. Drum was trying to work things out. So PennDOT's going to respond to that letter. Okay, any questions on that? It would be nice to see a face at one of our meetings. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, just to so we know who we're do, dealing with. So yeah. once that's in line, yeah, then let's try and set that up for okay. them to come Maybe to preferably the live. live for that one. Right. So when you, you're not going to be here in June, so sometime after July, July or okay. August. All right. Anything else for the good of the order? I'd like a minute of your time, Mr. Chairman. Uh, follow up on this 322-322 Clark's Ferry Improvement Project. Um, I've been provided, and I'm sure according to Jason, I was provided before, but I did not see it. A response to the letter that Perry County Planning Commission sent over your signature was responded to in an email to Steve, and that was forwarded on to us, I gather, in February. Uh, haven't had time to look at it. They've taken our two-page letter and reduced the response to four sentences. Um, basically, they're saying, uh, district is unable to consider a new overpass for 849 due to funding constraints. Uh, may we see the numbers? I don't know if they have numbers. I saw a number for the whole project, 35 million. 
you know, if they were to leverage this warehouse project up the road for the work that needs to be done at 22, 11, 15 interchange, that would free up enough money, in my opinion, for the bridge. So I'd like to see where their back is due to their words, funding constraints. Uh, if, if they have a, a problem with trying to address the Perry County scumbags, put in a traffic signal. That, that works for us, okay? That's just my opinion. Uh, they go on to say that this should be, this type of project should be handled by the, through the HATS MPO for their future long range transportation plan. Now that doesn't make sense. This project's supposed to be built. We know how long it takes for things to work through the long range transportation plan. And they're talking about letting this project, and now I'm reading that they're gonna let the Clarks, the, uh, the 849 bridge will be let with the Clarks Ferry project. That wasn't the way I heard it when they did their presentation down to high school that night. Um, there's things that can be done in the engineering world, such as alternate bidding, that I'd like to see whether they've explored. Um, it just, it starts off on the wrong foot that they didn't respond to a planning commission. They responded to, to staff. We wrote the letter. Um, <clears throat> The other thing is, they say here, uh, the effect on the uh, 11 15, I don't think they even addressed that, did they? The project is they're proposing it, is it's being proposed, uh, in my opinion, will definitely impact traffic on 11 15. And if you want to measure that, just take a look at the traffic count that's come up in the last two weeks. That got cords of the rubber bands out there because people can't use some of those ramps up there. Right. I can tell you it's doubled the traffic down Market Street, down Canada. Well, yes. But the local people know you don't have to go down 1115, turn around and come back up. But just go down, go across 849. So they didn't even address that. Uh, I'm just really disappointed. I can't say I'm surprised. But I think they need to hear from us uh, in some form or fashion. And I thought we'd get a chance to do that with the so-called Duncan State, but they have nothing to do with that. That's what I'm understanding. Duncan State doesn't involve this. No, that's not that's not exactly accurate, Bob. I, Okay. I think what the Duncannon study, whatever you want to call it, does is looking at changes in traffic patterns as a result of the improvements there around Clark's Ferry, how that would redirect traffic and what improvements might be warranted both on 11 and 15 and in Duncannon to maintain or improve traffic conditions there over the long term. So there's a direct relationship between the improvements and what we're looking at in, the, in that quote Duncanon study um, to see what other improvements might be locally necessary perhaps to invest in. So they would, the study then would look at the rerouting of the local and emergency vehicles over there and see whether that, what impact that's gonna have on that. Yeah, it's it started with uh, traffic counts and then traffic model projections of the changes uh, there. So yes. So the really until that study's done, do they have the scope of the Clark Ferry project uh, defined? Well defined. Yeah, it's it's based off of the improvements that are proposed, you know, to the Clark's Ferry Bridge and that stretch of twenty two three twenty two up in front of Sheets and everything. So based on those improvements, the Duncannon study looked at what are the likely changes in, tra in traffic patterns as a result of that on to both 11 and 15, that uncontrolled 
piece of 11 and 15 and in downtown Duncannon. And that's where those uh, there's some specific recommendations that are uh, proposed there. So the letter that the planning letter that the Perry County Planning Commission wrote will be considered in at that time, and the concerns raised therein with the emergency vehicles and time and, uh, the, and the emergency on 1115 in the mornings. And you know that's there, this is the only access, as the letter pointed out, for southeastern the, Perry County off a of four lane highway, and they're the, taking it away. The the emergency service uh, impacts and stuff have been an extensive part of the conversations of that Clark's Ferry design. They have talked to, I think, every emergency service provider up there, uh, shown them what they're proposed and have not received any negative comments uh, relating to those proposed improvements. I'm going to get off my hot horse here with a closing comment that says, you know, I'm not surprised. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they can put up a traffic light there and the Perry County's come by, we'll be happy. We don't need that improvement. This is for the through traffic, not for the Perry County resident. You, you, you mean the barrier, Bob? No, it'll slow that traffic down and make it more friendly to make turns on it. There's, you, you will not get rid of the fatalities and serious injuries in that stretch of road unless you preclude the left-hand turns. You slow the trucks down, you'll make a big difference. Now, uh, I'm done. Yeah, Thank I'll, you for your time. I'll disagree with you on that. Yeah. So be it. Miller. Comments or questions from about that? Would a, would a follow up letter be of any significance? As far as I'm concerned, they didn't respond to the plan. Any plan any okay, I'm still looking for a response. They've given us four sentences here that I counted had any merit to it, which was very little. It's penned up. Their mind is made up. Don't confuse me with any facts. So I give up. I got better things to do with my time. I tried. Motion to adjourn. All right. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn. You always do that. Well, I'm just I'm just yes. <laughs> Is there anything else to come for the good of the order? And if not, we will stand the germ. Thank you.